We'd either roast them on the fire, they'd be ground into a paste or a flour um, and cooked up into little cakes that could be eaten later on, or we eat them raw. The Mount Tambourine Show had an unusual stall this year, one devoted to bunya nuts. Falls from the tree and then it comes apart. Most of the curious crowd had heard of the distinctive towering bunya pine trees, which grow locally, but not of its giant cones filled with edible nuts. My mob's are Dungari and Gittable, so just over the border. Leeton Lee's Aboriginal heritage drives his interest in bush foods native to the area, including bunya nuts. As well as showing how the nuts can be used in modern dishes, he demonstrated how Aboriginal people ate them. We'd either roast them on the fire, they'd be ground into a paste or a flour, um, and cooked up into little cakes that could be eaten later on, or we eat them raw. And this is how you get the nut out of its leathery husk. I always go by this little curl at the end that it's facing the top, and then from there, I can basically just push it through. And then we pull that out and um, chuck this in for the mulch. Leeton wasn't planning on being Mr Bunya. The role sort of found him after he posted a message on the community Facebook page to gauge interest in a free workshop. The uses, harvesting preparation, safety and history and that sort of stuff. And the reaction was uh, quite overwhelming. So uh, I was expecting maybe 10 to 15 people, but I had uh, between 100 and 130 people uh, pretty much book in. <laughs> Lyndall and Phil Bailey drove several hours from New South Wales. We have a couple of bunya nut trees in our property and um, we're really interested to learn how to utilise those. Um, I'm a trained food technologist so I thought it'd be a really good idea to see you know, how we could incorporate these into our normal living. It's Locals Naomi and Jason Armstrong came because they had found some nuts and didn't know what to do with them. Two doors down from where we are, so we just found them the other week and yeah, it'd be great cooking them up and making something out of them. There's a lot more interest now in foraging for food and native bush food. I think that's just Australia-wide at the moment. Australia's unique bunya pines are found in isolated pockets around the country. The largest stand is in the Bunya Mountain National Park, an hour northeast of Dolby. Flowering, which only occurs every three to four years, once marked an important time for more than 20 Aboriginal tribes in Queensland and New South Wales. When they come into season, they were used for a festival. So basically, word would get sent out via a message stick, and that person would travel across different countries, passing the message that this is the year of the Bunya Festival. So people would get things from their country where they would trade. There'd be marriages, initiations, differences would be set aside, or weapons would be, you know, left left aside. As long as somebody was holding onto this message stick, they could pass through country without having to stop. Local elder Auntie Ruby says for Aboriginal people, bunya nuts were a lot more than food. My great grandfather would talk about the time, he lived up on the mountain here, and he would talk about the times of the bunya where they would travel in family groups down the mountain just laughing and singing and it was a very joyous time. They would link up with Gold Coast tribes and they would all journey in. So it was a, a little bit like today, I suppose, all the communities coming together. It was a very special time.
Ranger Kelvin Quinn is in charge of protecting the Bunya Pines in the Bunya Mountain National Park. The season was a bumper one this year, which kept his team busy setting up warning signs to protect people from the football-sized cones. Uh, they normally fall whole I and mean, they're quite heavy and make a big thump on the ground. Um, within a few days or a week they often start to break open and various animals such as some possums and various rodents, little guys called anychinus and things, they'll come by and grab them, some will eat them there and then, and wallabies, and some will take them off as little caches. They say they're about 200 million years old. The individual trees we have here are possibly 600, maybe up to 800 years old. In here, these parts here with the fleshy little fruits or wings around them, and that's what we're seeing here, these bits in here. And each of those is where your seed is. Now that little fella's the seed, and inside there is the bunya seed or the kernel. In one cone, there can be about 80 to 100 seeds, uh, but they believe that dinosaurs would have eaten them, probably ate these things whole. Kelvin says the mountains remain an important place for Aboriginal people. It's been compared to Parliament House, to politicians of Australia. It's been compared to other sacred sites in Australia, and it's amongst the big ones. It was a gathering place for possibly a few thousand Aboriginal people coming up here. In the late 1800s was some of the last sort of big feast of that type. It wasn't just a feast of the, the belly, it was a feast of the soul. The park has up to 300,000 visitors a year. And no, the nuts have to stay on the ground. You can't take them home. But visitors can eat them in the restaurant, where they're used on pizzas, in salads and fudge. Kelvin likes eating them. He says it's sweet revenge for the damage falling cones have done to his roof. For the Mount Tambourine show, Leeton gave the mountain's foodies nuts and asked them to devise a modern dish to showcase them. And bunya nut and chocolate fudge. Oh. He had no idea if they'd come through for him, but they did. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So I had the tough job of taste testing some of that. Fudges, pestos, and then we also had some other dips. We had a risotto come through as well. So yeah, an interesting mix of different foods. Leeton gave away hundreds of nuts for people to try at home. He forages for them when they're in season. Local landowners are more than happy for him to take them, but he has to be careful. Could we do this interview standing under these bunya trees at uh, the season when they drop? No, January, uh, December, January, February, um, you want, if you're anywhere near these, you want to be looking up. So how big, how heavy, how dangerous are they? Well, they can kill you. So the largest one that I got this season was 9.1 kilograms. And to put that into perspective, that's falling from a height of approximately 20 to 25 metres. It's um, pretty lethal. Leeton's great-grandparents were given five bunya nuts as a wedding present. Four trees are still standing. Not only a gift to the bride and groom, but also for their family. So children, grandchildren um, and the Thangadi people. It's a gift that keeps giving, really. He grew up eating them raw, boiled and roasted. Have you ever tasted these? No. Would you like to try one? I would love to. <laughs> Thank you. So how long has that cooked? Uh, about an hour 45. I feel like they'd be very filling. Mm. So a substitute for potato, for sweet potato? Yep, absolutely. Leeton says many landowners see the massive cones as annoying garden waste, and he wants to change that. People would actually just pile them into the trailer, take them to the dump, because they didn't know there was a use for them. Or they're left there and pushed into the garden and the animals would eat it. I think a lot of people, until they understand what they've actually got on their properties, yet yeah, they may cut it down. What's your message to them? Uh, hold on to them, yeah. <laughs> Leeton Lee has four jobs. 
a school chaplain, didgeridoo player, Aboriginal cultural teacher and a commercial artist. Native bush foods feature prominently in his art. The T-shirts, a lot of the native foods that are found here on the mountain. Um, so from uh, the bush lemons to the finger limes, blue quandon, uh, macadamia nuts, lily pillies, uh, gooseberries, uh, bunya nuts, round limes, uh, bananas, which grow wild here now, and sandpaper figs and Davidson plum. Leeton will have to wait at least three years for the next bunya nut season. One, one for you. He and his son love eating them and have a freezer full to last the year. Amazing He hopes he's sparked people's curiosity, so by the next nut fall, more people will have twigged their food, not garden waste. 